Hi best friends, hi besties for the resties. How's it going? <laughs> hi, um, hello. How's it going, how's it hanging? Short shriveled and always to the left. Uh, that's from a movie, it's not, that's not my, my terrible uh, joke. That's from a film, I believe it's Liar Liar. You know how sometimes the Jim Carrey movies kind of run together a little bit? I think this one's from Liar Liar because he like can't lie. So when he's like, oh, hey, how's it hanging? He's like, short, shriveled, and always to the left. And when I was a little kid, like six, seven years old, I was like, huh, short, shriveled, and always to the left. What an interesting answer. And now I'm like, <laughs> the sin. That's crazy. So how are we doing today? I posted this video today on my ASMR channel um, all about coffee. Damn, girl. Oh my gosh. I just watched it. I watched it back and I was like, that is the tingliest shit. Like, I'm, I'm just sitting in my car like knocking out to my own video. <laughs> I filmed it months ago, you guys. Like, probably at least two months ago. But I just uploaded it today and I'm getting through, you guys. I am getting through my old videos. Like, because I had over 30 videos pre-filmed on that channel that were uploaded and ready to go. And I was just like, you know what? I need to get through these so I can be more up to date. Because even if I'm like, you know, two or three weeks behind, that's one thing. But to be two, three, four months behind on content, and I'm doing a whisper ramble talking about, oh, it's gonna be summer soon. Meanwhile, it's like almost Labor Day. It's just not fun. So I want to be more up to date with my viewers. So I've been really powering through. I have been powering through like a tank of Rooney on these videos. And yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about it. I'm probably like 10 videos deep now. So I can start maybe slowing down a little bit. But I don't know. I am elephant in the room. I'm in the car driving very far away. Are you guys ready to hear where I'm driving to? I am driving. Oh, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. Uh, but I am going to uh, a place with a friend. I'm alone right now. So my friend right now is imaginary. Say hi. <laughs> They're shy. Uh, but no, I... <laughs> I'm on my way to meet a friend in a different state. I am driving 20 hours away from my house, baby. I will see how far I get tonight. I've gone an hour and a half so far. So we've got a little ways to go, but um, yeah, we are on our way. We are, we are on our way. We will go the distance. I don't care how far. Somehow I'll stay awake. Oh my god, you guys. I am gonna try my best. We'll, we'll see how far we can get. It's my goal. I have the goal today of going to Missouri. Of getting to Missouri. That's my goal. If I don't make it, it's fine. I gave myself plenty of time. Plenty of time to get to this location because I was like, okay, I'm driving alone. It's a long way. I'm going to get tired and sleepy and uh, I'm not going to want to go like, you know, I'm not going to want to push it because we check into our Airbnb at let's say like three o'clock, I think. And so I was like, okay, if I left at like five in the morning and drove all day, stayed at a hotel and then drove from like five in the morning to three the next day, like, I just don't want to push it and just be like so tired but have to like have to get there and have to push through it just uh, that's not my bag baby that's not my bag so i did the math i did the numbers i crunched the numbers and we did the math for two hotels on the way there and two hotels on the way back plus the gas money and it still cost me less than a flight and the flight wouldn't even be like a one shot flight I would have had to stop in Denver first and then fly there and so it wouldn't even be like a a one stop or like a no stop straight through flight 
and I would have had to get a rental car once I got there, which would have been an added layer. Oh, that's a beautiful lake. Wow. An added layer of stress and it would have cost me more money. Even like I can get a rental car for pretty cheap, you know, but it's like still it's just extra cost. So a rental car and a flight would have cost me so much more or yeah, so much more than to just drive there and get hotels on the way there and back. So I was like, frick that. I'm just going to, I'm just going to stay in hotels. So we are on our way. I have everything packed up. I have my filming stuff. I have my nail stuff because I haven't done my nails in quite a while, like a few days, at least I think like five or six days they are hanging on and I have them on with the peely base underneath. And so, um, the peely base is only supposed to last like three or four days and then you're supposed to peel off, peel it off and start new. But I, I'm, they're still kicking and they're still looking pretty. Look at that. Look how pretty, but I did bring my nail stuff so that when I get to the hotel tonight and I'm like, Oh, I'm so tired. I have nothing else to do. I can do my nails, pamper myself a little bit, brought a face mask, the whole thing. So I can have a really relaxing night. Although it was hard, I cried considerably when I left because I was just like my baby. I didn't want to leave my babies and I didn't want to leave CJ. I mean, part of me did want to leave them, you know, just to have that time by myself. I really, really wanted and needed time by myself. But at the same time, it's just like, but you guys could come with me. <laughs> you guys could come with. And they would have a place to stay too. Like they wouldn't even have to stay in the Airbnb with me and my friend. They could stay somewhere else because we've got family where we're going. But yeah, I was like, no, you guys, no, could you? No, no, you could, right, you couldn't come. So they didn't, they're at home and I get to be by myself. Oh my gosh, so exciting. Um, Yeah, but I will say anxiety, <laughs> anxiety is a month. Okay, it is because I was telling my friend Rochelle this too last night and I was just like so I read Rose this book it's called reach for the stars we've never read it before but it was just so oh my god I cried it was so beautiful and it starts at when she's a baby and it just like follows her throughout her life and it was just such a beautiful book reach for the stars and I read it to Rose and then I was like oh my god like what if this is the last book that I ever read her because something happens to me while I'm on the road you know, because driving is dangerous and I, I can be as safe as I, I can be, but like I can't control other people on the road and I'm not the greatest driver in the world, let's be honest. So it's just like, it's a long drive. And I was like, what if something happens to me? And so I made CJ, I was like, look at me, listen to me, like pay attention to me. I'm about to say something important and I don't want you to be like, oh, you're so weird or like whatever. Sorry, running nose, I have allergies. Um, I was like, I don't want you to say anything about it. I just want you to listen. And he was like, okay. So I showed him the book and I set it aside. And I was like, this is the last book that I read to Rose. And it was really beautiful. And I was just like, if anything happens to me on this trip, I want you to remember like that this was the last book that I read to her. And I want you to read it to her all the time and tell her that that's like how mommy, oh my God, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Oh, and tell her that like that's what mommy wants for her and that's what like I wanted to do with her life because it's all about like how along the way along the road of life mommy teaches you things and teaches you things and helps you grow and helps you reach for the stars and teach you more things and um takes you places on adventures and all of this stuff and then at the end it says I hope that when I when there's nothing else that I can teach you that you still call <laughs> And then it shows them like hugging or whatever. It was so beautiful, you guys. And I was just like, and make sure like when you remarry, like that your wife reads this book to her and is a good mother figure. And I was, <laughs> and he was just like, dude, shut the fuck up. <laughs> You're being weird. And I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's just anxiety, you know. Anything could happen to any of us at any time regardless of whether we're doing anything dangerous or not. But here I am like driving 
essentially driving 40 hours and it's just like anything could happen and anything could happen at home too. Rosie lit something on fire today. A candle was burning on the table and me and CJ were talking right next to her in the kitchen and she was like, ah, ah, ah. And I was like, oh shit, she just lit herself on fire. Like for, it, that's never happened before, but it just like, that's instantly what clicked in my mind. And then I was like, no, she lit her baby on fire. And cause she wasn't screaming in pain. So I was like, but something's on fire. And I look and of course, sure as shit, something's on fire. And I just had that feeling, that mom feeling. And um, yeah, she had, I don't know what happened, but one of her baby's outfits was on top of the candle burning. And um, I don't know if she was like not paying attention and just like threw it down and it went in the fire or if she intentionally put it in there, which I don't think she would do. Or if she was like reaching over to pick it up and like grabbed it and then dropped it. I don't know what happened, but um, yeah, like that would have taken out our whole neighborhood you know, cause we're in like a townhome situation. So it's just crazy. Like anything could happen at any time. And it's just, it's scary to take adventures like this and know that like, while you're gone, Passport could get hit by a car. Rose could fall off of a jungle gym. CJ could get into an accident, fall off a roof. Like it, you know, anything could happen. And so, um, it's hard to take adventures like this and live your life knowing that, and especially with how the world is today where it's like, you can't even go to the mall and be safe. Like we have the mall of America in Minnesota. And there was that incident a few years ago where the child was grabbed by a random person and thrown over the third floor balcony, like just at random, you know? Oh, thanks for visiting Minnesota. Goodbye, Minnesota. Hello, Iowa. Um, yeah, and that was like a completely random attack. And with like people bringing guns into movie theaters and stuff, you just never know what moments are gonna be your last. So it's easy to hermit and be like, oh shit, like, excuse me, excuse me. Um, just to be like, I'm just gonna stay in my house and never leave. Especially if you have kids. And that's something I really tried hard not to fall into was that fear of like, just the fear of something bad happening, so not leaving my house. So I think the first road trip that I took with Rose, we took her halfway across the country, I know that. And I think she was like three weeks old and it was a road trip and yeah, we just never, we never wanted to let having a kid stop us from our adventuring and our being fun and we haven't, so that's good. But it's a lot easier for me to be like, oh, I'm going to go on a road trip with my family or I'm just going to go on a road trip with Rose because then I feel like I can see her, I can protect her, I can feel her. Whereas when I go by myself, it's like, oh, damn, like I'm away from my family. What could happen? It's a little bit scary. But CJ got me, excuse my, my white bitch of my nose. It's just allergies and annoying. Um, but CJ got me an oil change today and he got me he was like okay got your oil changed you got uh i filled up your car so it's got a full gas tank and um you have a, a pack of sunflower seeds in the car an empty cup for spitting them in and a fresh ice cold celsius <laughs> waiting for you and i was like okay damn <laughs> you want to get married like okay it was so sexy of him to do that, but um, yeah, I really appreciated it. So then what else? Yeah. Oh, and my friend, um, I was talking to my friend Danielle today, Danny ASMR, if you guys don't know her or truly Danny, she has a vlog channel as well. That's just like this, literally just like this. She puts more effort into the editing than I do. She's way better at that stuff than me, but she has a vlog channel just like this, Truly Danny, spelled T-R-U-E-L-Y, Danny. And um, I highly suggest, if you like these vlogs, go check her out, give her all your views. Forget about me, leave me behind. <laughs> um, but I was talking to her and she was just like, do you, this is a random question, but do you ever have a hard time 
finding vegan options, like when you go out to restaurants and stuff. And so I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about that for you guys too, just in case you're curious or whatever. It's something that I was just asked, so it's on my mind. But uh, I went vegan almost eight years ago. Seven and a half years ago, I started becoming more, or it was probably about eight years ago, around this time, I started getting more like vegan curious. And my goal was to eat like 50% of my meals vegan. And then my ultimate goal was to be like 95% vegan. And I was, obviously I'm 100% vegan now, but um, it was my goal to like eventually have most of my diet be vegan, except for like a treat here and there or going on a trip and having whatever. But um, I didn't end up going vegan until January of 27, no, January of 2016. So we are coming up on my eight year anniversary, which is wild. But when I first went vegan, so many of like, even the frozen products in the stores, like the chicken nuggets and the like corn dogs and stuff, so many of those weren't even vegan. They were just vegetarian. So they still had eggs or uh, milk or cheese in them. And that was really frustrating because like I couldn't even, most of the time couldn't even have chicken nuggets because they had eggs in them in the breading or whatever it was. And it was just like, dude, like it was, it was rough. And then going to restaurants, my literally, literally you guys, my only choice was French fries 90% of the time. And now switch to present day, how much that's changed. It's night and day, you guys, like night and day. Most places have at least one thing, at least one vegan option for me. Some of them have full vegan menus that you can ask for and they'll bring out like a full vegan menu. And like, it's just crazy. I still don't have great options when it comes to going to like a, a mom and pop diner in a small town or a breakfast place or whatever, like things like that, like a steakhouse, obviously, like places that you wouldn't expect there to be a vegan option. There probably isn't one, but most burger places have a vegan burger. Um, almost every pizza place has vegan options. The only, like most vegan or most pizza places are actually like coming out with vegan cheese and stuff now, which was never a thing when I first went vegan. Um, what else? Like, yeah, every brewery I go to has like a vegan burger and usually they'll have like vegan mayo or aioli or cheese that goes on it too. So it's not just like a plain bun and burger. Like a lot of places I have really good luck, but what I do, what I always do is I make sure to bring my own ranch everywhere I go. If I'm going to a restaurant, I will be bringing my own ranch. And the reason why is because that way if all else fails, I can get a plain salad with no dressing and I'll have my ranch and I'll have my delicious salad and it'll all be delicious and great. Most places have like oil and vinegar. I am not an oil and vinegar girl. <laughs> no, 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 not for me. I am a ranch girl. I'm a ranch queen. I'm the queen of the ranch. Like I, I am a rancher. Okay. Just put a cowboy hat on me and stick me on a horse. I'm a rancher. I like ranch and I don't like anything else on salads, anything. Like even if they have like a, like a sesame Asian dressing kind of thing. I no, no, I just, I can't do it. I can't do it. Or like a poppy seed dressing. It's, it's nice. I can't do it. So I always bring my own ranch with me that way, just in case I have that. But I said steakhouses earlier, honestly, steakhouses, I actually do usually have a pretty easy time having a meal because they usually have a chef 
that's the thing. That's the difference. If they have a chef, I'm good to go. I'm totally good to go because I can go to the chef and say, or the waiter can go to the chef and be like, she doesn't do cheese. She doesn't do eggs. She doesn't do meat. She doesn't do butter. She doesn't do like whatever. And what can you come up with? And almost every time I will get a beautiful pasta dish where it's like pasta with olive oil and garlic and fresh vegetables and mushrooms that are sauteed in like a white wine sauce. Like I'm good to go when they have a chef and most steakhouses, like fancy steakhouses do have a chef. I feel like they get pissed off and kind of roll their eyes when they're like, why is a vegan coming here <laughs> when they know that like we don't have anything, but um, they always are super accommodating and super, super nice. But yeah, and like on, when I went to Mexico, I did not have a problem because on each dish, like let's say at the buffet, on each dish that they had out, it would have a little allergen listing. So it would say like allergens are gluten, dairy, and eggs or whatever on every single thing. And so it was really easy for me to see like, oh, okay, this um this like like let's say it was like a mexican fried rice oh this mexican fried rice has egg or something like that and it was just really easy that way to figure out and i brought this little card with me i still have it i got it on etsy and on one side is english and on the other side is Me uh not mexican uh spanish i'm sorry um i was in mexico when i used it that's why i said that but um, on one side, it had it in Spanish, one side in English, and it had little pictures as well in case um, somebody couldn't read it for whatever reason. It had little pictures with a line and a circle saying like no eggs, no meat, no fish, no gelatin, that kind of thing. And it literally said on there, soy vegano or vegana, which means like I'm vegan and um, no fish, no gelatin, no eggs, no dairy, no whatever. And that was super, super helpful as well. And everybody, gosh, everybody was so accommodating on that trip and so kind. Like I would give it to my waiter and they'd be like, don't worry, we'll take care of you. And I was like, okay. And then at one place that we went to, even the guy comes up to me and he's like, you know what? I know exactly what we'll do. And I'm like, okay, what is it? And he like tells me about this dish and he's like, and we have tofu. We'll put it on top for you. I was like, you do not. And he was like, we do. It was just so sweet. So yeah, like I find that nowadays and every day going forward, it just gets easier and easier. Like when I first went vegan eight years ago, almost, we had like, one or two dairy-free ice creams and they were like vegan brands that were super expensive and not very good if we could even find a dairy-free ice cream at all and now almost every major brand has their own line of vegan flavors haagen does ben and jerry's has like 25 vegan flavors they have tons um cold stone has vegan options just ev like everything and so I go to the grocery store now and I have my own whole frozen section of vegan ice cream. It's incredible, like the difference that we've made. And people say all the time, like, oh, you're just one person. You're not making a difference. Girl, girl, we are. I've seen it. I've seen it with my own two eyes. And I can only, all I can do is thank the vegans who came before us, who lived in the 70s and 80s and 90s and had no options. They had nothing. They had tofu, dude. They had tofu and salads and green smoothies and that's it. And I just, I thank goodness like for them for paving the way. They walked so that we could run, jump and dance. Like, and it took so long. So their persistence to the lifestyle and to the diet and their never giving up just made all the difference for us for me and my daughter like my daughter has cheese sticks and marshmallows at home and chocolate bars and um yogurt and 
chocolate milk and regular milk and all different kinds and she's got she's got everything that a normal kid would have it's great like it's really really great and that's not everything either like I ideally for me personally I want to do like a whole foods plant-based diet with not very many like processed foods just because everybody should kind of like lay low on the processed food situation I don't think it's good for us for a lot of reasons like mental health wise and everything there's something in the food dude there is something in the food it causes cancer I don't know what the deal is but it's a problem but um to have those options anyway is just like it's life-changing for people it really is like it, it truly is or for people who have a seriously bad like dairy allergy there most people are lactose intolerant but um, a lot of them are just like well I'm gonna eat this and then just hurt really really bad <laughs> and they eat it anyway but for the people who have like serious allergies to these things to fish to um, eggs to dairy whatever the case may be to have those alternatives and still be able to fit in with people and with their families when they're having a fish fry they can have their own vegan fish and that's just like that's memories made that's life that life is meant to be lived with people with community sharing a meal together and so I'm just really grateful for all the vegans who came before me who made it possible for us to have what we do and yes Rosie is still vegan at this point I don't know when or if that'll change because she she's a kid she doesn't know like she goes back and forth some days she'll be like daddy I'm vegan I'm not gonna stop being vegan and then other days she'll be like I want cow cheese or like whatever and she's just she goes back and forth and that's why I don't think she's ready to make the decision yet because I want her to be old enough to where she doesn't laugh at at hard things like when somebody dies and we're talking about that and how it's really sad and she's just like oh okay like when she doesn't get it you know I want her to get it like the other day um I was talking about being vegan and I was like you know that being vegan saves animals this is not a vegan vlog I'm sorry like I just I'm just chatting and I don't judge anybody for what they eat if you guys are sitting here like bitch she is she would hate me because I love steak or whatever I don't care like I literally don't care I'm just talking about myself and um, obviously I would love I can't lie I would love for everybody in the whole world to be vegan but everybody also has free to live their own damn lives and I have no say in it you know um, but I was like I'm glad that I'm vegan because it saves animals lives and she was like no it doesn't and I said yes it does and she said it does I save animals and I said well yeah if you don't eat them then they then you're not killing any animals and she was like huh like you could tell that it just kind of clicked because she knows that like animals have to die for meat and animals get hurt in the factory farming industry and all of that and so she knew that but she didn't realize that like her not eating them is a direct she doesn't get like the whole economics of it but it's a cause and effect of less meat being produced because less meat is being sold so therefore whatever um so yeah, she was just like, wow, I save animals. And I was like, yeah. So she's starting to kind of be able to get it. But at the same time, like, if I'm like, Rose, I, I need to talk to you about something really, really serious. She'll just be like, ha, 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 ha. She just doesn't, she's not ready to take things seriously yet, I don't think, on like a deep level to where I could show her footage and be like, this is really serious. This is an animal, like, dying or whatever. I don't think she'd get it so until she gets it then she's gonna be vegan and once she is old enough to understand and old enough to see and not be traumatized then I'll show her what I've seen I'll show her what I know and then she can make her own decision that's all I want I just want her to make an informed decision and if she's a kid and she's selfish like kids are and like kids are supposed to be then she'll 
be like, I don't care that it hurts animals. I like, or I want to try it or I want to eat it or I like it or whatever. Or I want to be like other kids and I don't really care about the animals, whatever. I just want her to be informed because I look at old pictures of me as a kid, like scarfing down ribs and having like the bones in my mouth and all this stuff. And I'm just like, damn, I had no idea. Like, I wish that I knew. And if I had known, I still probably wouldn't have cared and I would have eaten it anyway, but at least I would have had some kind of capacity to make a choice. I don't know. Yeah. I just think that with religion, with diet, with lifestyle, I think it's really important for kids to have some kind of a choice. At the end of the day, your parents have to make your decisions for you for a very long time because you're a kid and you can't make your own decisions. So if you're going to church on Sunday, you're going to church on Sunday, you know? But at some point when they get older, I feel like it's just important to be like, okay, you know that some people don't believe this and other people believe this. Like, I'm very honest with Rose. We don't go to church or anything. CJ does occasionally, but um, we've never like gone to church regularly. And I don't believe necessarily in anything at this point. I'm very like agnostic where it's like, it's not that I'm a non-believer. I just don't believe it at this point. But um, I tell Rose all the time, like, you know, people go to church to talk about Jesus. Jesus is a baby. Like that's the best way I can kind of explain it to her. And then on Christmas, I'm like, telling her that some people celebrate Christmas because of that baby Jesus that they talk about in the church. And so like I, even though I don't believe that and I don't celebrate it for that reason, I know that that's a huge part of life. And so I don't ever want to shield her from it just because I'm like a non-believer or whatever. I don't want to make her just completely unaware that like these other options exist and yeah like we have a very diverse friend group around us and a very diverse family who believe all sorts of things and she's gonna grow up grow up with a very interesting perspective I think because we're all so different so different like all of my friends believe different things politically. All of my family is like super divided on their politics. I'm the only vegan in the family and I'm very vegan, like very passionate about it. Um, it's just gonna be very interesting. Like even with me and CJ and like our belief systems, we believe very different things. We fall on very different lines, very different spots on every spectrum. <laughs> on every chart we are like opposites and she loves us both and she values both of our opinions so it'll be very interesting to see where this baby lines up like as she gets older it'll be very interesting but yeah I'm getting off on this exit here which I'll be on this road for I think another like 32 miles or something like that I looked at it before when I was at a rest stop I had to pee so bad and then I did I was I was like trying to hold it and then I was just like wait I'm looking at the directions by the way and I was trying to hold it and then I was like bitch I'm in the car by myself like I can I can go pee if I want to I don't have to like get anybody out of the car seat I don't have to do any of the the nonsense I can literally just like run and go to the bathroom what a concept so I did and now I have to pee again because <laughs> I'm a mother. I'm a mother and I just have to do that all the time. Oh my gosh. I like, I don't know what it is about me where I, I just have to pee all the time. I swear I didn't used to be like that. Like I swear I, I didn't have to pee as much as I do. But like there are other people, like one of my really, really good friends. Um, I swear to you, she never pees. She never pees. Like I go, I won't say which friend because I don't want to talk about her bladder in public, but she never pees. Like I will arrive to her house that's 
excuse me, 20 minutes from my house and I'll have to pee instantly. We'll go somewhere, wherever we go. I have to pee once we get there. I have to pee three times while we're there. And that whole time she just won't pee. I'm like, dude, bladder of steel. I'm envious. I'm so envious. So, yeah. I'm really excited for this trip, this getaway really excited. I need it, you guys. I need to have a little bit of recharge time, alone time, time with with a new friend. Um, I need just Brooke time, you know? Brooke time is important. It's really important. And I'll go back feeling better than ever, rocking and rolling, rooney dooney doonin but it'll be good. It'll be really good, really good. I've been officially driving for two hours. So that means I have a million left to go. <laughs> and yeah, super grateful to have this time though. I do not take it lightly. I don't take it for granted. I'm really excited. I thought I would be more nervous because I'm meeting a friend that I've never met before. But I'm not, like, maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day I'll be more nervous. But as of right now, I'm good. I'm Gucci Tucci Lemon Squeezy. I'm fine. I'm excited. I brought all my clothes, I think, that I need. I brought, I'll be gone for like five, six, seven days. I brought like 50 pairs of underwear, like, <laughs> just to be safe, you know? I, I'm a, definitely like an over underwear packer. I'm an under everything else packer, but when it comes to black leggings and underwear, I will be set for a month. And I think it's because I change them every day. Like with my bra, I don't change my bra every day. I can wear that over and over. And like t-shirts I could wear over and over if I had to, if I didn't spill all over them. But like my underwear and my leggings, I change them every day. Like I can't rewear them. So I need to have a million pairs. But yeah, I haven't checked the weather of where we're going. I haven't looked at the map to see what it's nearby. I have not done any research whatsoever. So that'll be fun and interesting. I'll do that probably at the hotel tonight. We have this good system. It's like a nice little system of Rooney Dooney Doo where if I'm driving and I'm like starting to feel tired to where I'm like, yeah, I kind of want to stop soon. What I'll do is I'll call CJ and then he'll get on the price line and he will book me a hotel and just be like, okay, you're going to stop in one hour. It's at this hotel. It's this many stars. <laughs> like he'll book it for me. Not because I don't know how to book my own hotel because honey, I do, but because it's just easier that way I, I don't have to like stop driving and get on my phone and do it I don't have to try to do it while I drive which is illegal and dangerous and then I just I, he sends me the address and I go so it's pretty nifty galifty to say the least it's a good little system that we have if I'm staying in an Airbnb then I book it because I'm more comfortable with the app I use it a lot more but if it's a hotel, 95% of the time, he'll be the one booking it because that's what he likes. And he prefers that I stay at a hotel when I'm out of town. I prefer Airbnbs, but he definitely prefers me to stay at a hotel because in his mind, he's like, there are more people around and more people means you're safer, which is debatable, but yeah, there are pros and cons to it for sure. But if I'm just doing literally like an overnight, just going there to sleep, I'll stay at a hotel. But if I were like on my way home and CJ was like, can you stay gone one more day? Which usually happens like 95% of the time that I go out of town, I'll be like, okay, I'm almost home. And he'll be like, can you just stay one more day? Because he doesn't want to clean. That's the tea. That is the tea. He wants, I want to come home to a clean house and he doesn't want to clean or he pushed it off till the last minute. And then, oh shoot, Brooke's five hours away. This house is a disaster. Can you please stay gone one more day? 
that's the tea. And um, so then I'll book myself an Airbnb so I can like stay there and hang out and enjoy and cook food. But otherwise, I'll just do a hotel. All I need, I have a little cooler here with some items in it just because like I, I figure we're gonna make some meals at the house, but um, so like we'll probably go grocery shopping but I don't know what the grocery stores look like down here. I don't know if we're gonna be close to like a Walmart or a Target or what vegan options they'll have. So I just made sure to bring a few things for me, some cream cheese, some vegan eggs, some, uh, what else did I bring? Some vegan chicken, just like easy little, little things like that. I made sure to bring those and my ranch, of course. I brought my ranch. I made a big fresh batch today of my of my tofu ranch. It's the best. It's so creamy, so delicious, high in protein, very good. Very good. So I'm going 75, but I'm not seeing how fast we're supposed to be going. But everybody behind me like keeps getting further and further into the distance. I don't know what the deal is. The people in front of me are keeping up, like same pace, but the people behind me are like just disappearing. <laughs> They're going away. See, so yeah, I did bring that. So at a hotel, all that I really need, I need a bed and I need a fridge. That's it. And I made sure not to bring anything that like had to be kept frozen. The vegan eggs should be kept frozen, but they don't like, they're not gonna go bad if they're kept in the fridge or anything. So I made sure, oh, it's 65 here, okay. So I made sure to not bring any like vegan frozen like corn dogs or hash browns or anything like that that needed to be kept frozen because that wouldn't have worked well. And then I also got some tofurkey and some sliced cheese in case I wanted to make like a sandwich or something. I don't know how much we'll be cooking at home though versus like how much we'll be going out to eat or ordering in food, I'm not sure. We will figure it out. Not everything has to have a plan. I do like to be like mentally prepared for certain things, but not everything must have a plan. Right? <laughs> right? I wanted to bring a bike. Um, we, we talked about bringing our bikes and I looked on Facebook Marketplace for a bike rack and I was like, I don't even know what I'm looking for, dude. Like, I, I, they confused me because there were so many different kinds. And I was like, I don't know what's gonna work with my car. I don't know any of this stuff. So I was like, CJ, will you find me a bike rack? And he was like, sure. And all of them were like over a hundred bucks. And I was just like, ooh, <laughs> just with all the other stuff like that I've been paying for recently and trying not to spend extra money if I don't absolutely have to. I did buy, I'll tell you about this later, I did buy something really, really fun for a future video, two really fun things for a future video, but um, yeah, other than that, I just really have to put everything I have into my fall and Halloween candle launch, which I don't really know what I'm going to do about that because I have eight new scents that I, that I have coming out that I wanted to come out on August 1st. Well, they didn't, so now I'm late, I'm behind. And so I'm like, do I release all of the scents? Do I just release none of them and release only my fall ones from last year? Do I um, release a couple of them? I don't know. I really don't know because I was expecting to have a bunch of huge fall and Halloween shows that I was going to do. And what do you know, I all of them fell through. So all of the shows that I was planning on selling hundreds of candles at, if not over a thousand candles, suddenly, poof, they're not there. So it's like, do I even release them? And if I released all eight candles, not like a copious amount of them, but just all eight candles, it would literally cost me like $2,500 to buy all of the stuff to release those eight candles. 
so it's just like dude <laughs> bro whoa uh yeah so the bike rack did not work out needless to say and I'm bummed about it I'm sure my friend is bummed about it too but no bike we're just gonna have to walk but from what I've read on the Airbnb pretty much everything is within walking distance so that's really nice but yeah I am probably going to cut this video here because it is quite long and I will put up a new video uh, or I will start filming a new video in a little bit but I just wanted to, I don't want to keep this one like going and going and going. I want to cut it off here and start a new topic. And so if you're curious of like, what is she talking about? What did she buy for a new video? I'll talk about that in my next video, but yeah, hopefully this one uploads. I don't know how long it's going to take to upload, but we will see. And I appreciate you listening. If you are still here after 46 minutes, girl, put a bicycle in the comment section down below so I know who the real ones are. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. The real ones can hear me, Merv. Nobody else. All right. I love you guys and I will talk to you later. I hope you're having a good day. I miss you already and I'm literally just about to turn on the camera and talk to you again. Either way. <laughs> I love you guys. Bye.